Oh, holy smokes, we just got some numbers. I just finished the course member live stream and then I look and I go, oh my gosh, we just got these numbers here. We've got to go through them. This is actually a big deal for the economy. We'll go through the actual report as well. Let me just get started with the numbers because, oh boy. Okay, you ready for this? First of all, construction spending was revised down in the prior report, but construction spending month over month up 0.9% in this report. This is generally driven by real estate uh, building and investment. Uh, you're seeing a lot of residential construction starts. We had a blowout last month because there's so little housing inventory. So builders are like, okay, we'll build more then if people are gonna keep paying for these houses. That's on the real estate side of things, which is actually a good contributor to GDP, helps keep us out of potentially a recession. But more importantly, these ISM numbers, you ready for this? ISM manufacturing, seventh month of contraction in a row, comes in weak at 46 versus 47.1. A number under 50 is recessionary, contractionary, not good. Uh, so less manufacturing, not so great for the economy. However, some good news, ISM prices paid, huge miss. Hugo miss. I mean, we were looking at a 44 read. A number under 50 is contractionary, right? We were looking at 44 for prices paid, so contractionary. We got 41.8. Big miss. Look at some of the quotes from the actual report. And, and it'll really give you an idea of sort of this mixed economy we're in, where we're trying to stabilize, like land the plane or keep flying the plane. Who, who knows about the analogies anymore these days? But Listen to some of these quotes here, and I think they'll give you some insight into what's going on out there, and then we'll uh, we'll add some commentary, obviously, after the fact. So, all right, you ready for this? Here we go. Uh, seventh month of contraction after 30-month period of expansion for manufacturing. The price index in, uh, it registered a 41.8%, down 2.4% compared to May. That's good. We want prices to go down. The U.S. manufacturing sector shrank again, losing ground, indicating a faster rate of contraction. Not great. So <clears throat> faster kind of collapse in manufacturing, not good as a potential leading indicator for those recessionary concerns, right? And ultimately, we don't want to go into recession, right? That's a problem. Now, there are some bright spots in this as well. Softness continues, and optimism about the second half of 2023 is weakening. Okay, that's not good. This is not a good report. Not good so far. Demand eased again. I mean, clearly price pressures are gone in manufacturing, right? Because obviously demand is, is weakening here. Now take a look at this. A potential bright spot. Cons uh, customers inventory index dropped to the too low territory. Now this is for leading orders. So there's a potential leading indicator that you're going to see a turnaround in inventory where companies start buying inventory again which contributes to GDP, but also increases the expenses for those companies, right? EPS goes down. Potential bright spot though, again, for manufacturing, if you get new reordering, okay? Of the six biggest manufacturing industries, only one transportation equipment registered any growth in June, and suppliers have capacity. This is not an inflationary market that we're in. This is an absolutely slowing down economy the question is, can we slow to a level where we're not in recession and just get through this nasty period of high interest rates? That's the tough part. And the slowing is clearly here. Like if the Fed only read this report, there's no way in hell they should raise rates again. Customers are less inclined to purchase far in advance, <coughs> according to the computer and electronic product segment. Yeah, keep in mind, this is the problem that you had with Enphase as well. There, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Their wholesale buyers pause buying because they just sold through the inventory they had. Remember, Enphase doesn't sell directly to a customer. They sell to a wholesaler, and then the wholesaler sells to a customer, uh, or or you know uh, individual like electricians maybe who then install uh, you know install the equipment on behalf of a customer. So you have these multiple different layers in between. When you get that order reordering, that's when a company like Enphase does well. And so it looks like maybe that supply capacity is available, but you're not getting as much wholesale buy-through because people are sort of delaying these purchases. They don't want as much inventory on hand anymore because they figure, ah, the manufacturer will have it. Why did you have a lot of that during COVID where people were hoarding inventory? 
because it took forever to get a new shipment because of all the supply chain snarls. Now you don't have supply chain snarls. You want a product, snap your fingers, it shows up. The suppliers are like, we're ready. We're ready to ship it. When do you need it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a totally different environment now. You don't have supply chain, shortages, supply chain shortages. You don't have an indicator here of a, a, an inflationary explosion. This is, this is a reiteration that inflation is not the problem. The problem is how much is this economy going to slow down uh, and does it crash land or do we keep going? And so you get some mixed commentary here. Listen to some of this commentary. Our company thought the second half would be better than the first half, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Customer orders have definitely slowed down. That's in chemicals. There were concerns the second quarter was going to fall. That is a softer second quarter. Uh, however, demand has remained stable. This is in transportation equipment. So kind of a little bit of both sides here, right? Uh, there's an elevated level of capital uh, review that's going on because of the recession. While not delayed, spending and planning are being prioritized. That's for more restaurants. Market is stabilizing for petrol. Healthy backlog for machinery. North America demands stabilizing, but European markets showing slowing for fabricated metal. Halfway through the year, while things are challenging, we may be doing all right. Non-metallic metallic material, uh, mineral products. Input costs for materials continue to decline. Again, deflationary, 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 deflation. Everything is deflationary, with the exception of wages. See, pricing is stabilized, but labor costs remain high. Demand is trending to about 2019 levels, adjusting for inflation. Uh, COVID-driven demand has moderated in paper products. So what do, you, what do we gather from this sort of report? Uh, well, what we're really hearing is things are returning to a mean. This is very normal. Keep in mind what a return to a mean looks like. If this is your economy like this, and then you get a massive stimulative, well, you get a shut down the economy moment, then you get a massive stimulative economy. Now you're getting this sort of return to mean. The goal is not going negative. That's the goal. We don't want to go negative. But if we're just returning to mean, of course things are going to slow down. When it gets really dirty is if we start seeing inflation take off. And while we might see core inflation stay hot because of summer travel and the sa uh, travel season, although hopefully CPI sort of adjusts for that, after all they do seasonal adjustments because of that, this summer travel season might be particularly hot though, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, other than that core inflation potentially popping up from travel, it does not seem like there's really any lingering inflation. Yes, wages are still higher, but there's certainly no <clears throat> wage price spiral. And if anything, demand is really suggesting a, a normalization. Uh, is, is this, are these commentary items here a sign of definitely recession? No, absolutely not. But they're definitely a sign that the Fed's slowing of the economy is functioning and prices are stable. So while I'm gonna pay attention to this to see if things continue to trend worse for some of these industries, which could be a recessionary indicator, this report on its own, I think is great news for inflation and okay news on the economy. It might be a little tilted bearish here, but otherwise, okay. I'm, I'm okay with this since there will be a normalization expectation. So my take, fascinating report just out minutes ago. Thanks, bye. Now I want you to know this, when it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money and if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced.